backing out on our engagement, are you, Elise? Je ne regrette rien, Valère, rien. But this is dangerous. We're playing with fire. I shake, I quiver. And I love you. <sighs> what could you possibly fear when you have me to protect you? A hundred things. Start with my father's rage, for one. And if that's not enough, there's my family, my reputation, my honor. Not to mention you. You're a man, Valère. You'll say anything to get what you want. How can I know I can trust you? Oh, we are a bad gender, Elise. I agree. But <laughs> you must see me as an exception. My love for you is deeper than the ocean, <laughs> wider than the sea, longer than life, and larger than all of Paris. Words, Valère. Just words. Promises are one thing. Deeds another. Well, then open your heart and let my deeds erupt in your soul. <laughs> See me for what I am, not for what you fear me to be. Time, time, time. Give me time. A thousand proofs of my love shall be yours. Oh, I'm such a pushover. One sweet nothing from you, and I'm creme brulee. I don't doubt your love, Valère, or your constancy. It's the disapproval of others. Imagine. A lifetime of reproachful eyes staring at me. Why would that bother you? <laughs> if only others could see you as I do. Every waking moment I recall how you pulled me from the waves on that terrible day, laid me out on the shore, and filled me with the breath of life. And now, <laughs> you stay here with me, forced into this hideous masquerade, acting as my father's steward, Despite your noble upbringing and your long lost family, <laughs> all of this has a marvelous effect on me, Valère. I bask in your radiance, but others don't see it that way. They think of you as a, as a serpent. You call me whatever they may, but it is my passion for you that defines who I truly am. Your lover, your protector, your servant. And if that monstrosity of a father of yours, that hideous, avaricious, greedy ogre, whose every action threatens to destroy even his own fragile children, cannot see me for who I am, then, then by God I will travel the globe, search for my real family, and stand them in front of him, and then that little rodent will see what's what, and who's who, and at least have I gone too far. Don't leave me, Valère, not alone with him. I beg you, stay, and try to gain my father's full confidence. But what more can I do? Daily I bow to him, praise him, offer sympathy, all to win him over. And it's working. He believes me. But what a price. I don't believe a word I say anymore. But on I go, praising his voluminous virtues, cackling at his rapier sharp witticisms, and flattering his every whim. And flattery wins every round release, even with the most suspicious. Season a vicious insult with a pinch of praise, and the game is won. Meanwhile, I'm on the verge of spontaneous combustion. Well, maybe we should enlist my brother's help, in case the scullery maid should betray our secret. Oh, no, no, no. One is enough. Trying to manage both your father and your brother is like trying to stop a marble from rolling down a hill. Those two are so at each other's throats that getting in the middle, I'm bound to be pressed into a stain on the carpet. But you, Elise, you have your brother's confidence. <laughs> you work on him. Now's your chance. He's coming. Me. I'm going. I love you. Do your best, but wait for the right moment. <laughs> Sister! Oh, oh, thank goodness you're alone. I can't hold it in any longer. You're the only one I can tell. Uh Tell what, brother? I am in love! You are in love? I am in love! I am in love! But before you go on, let me assure you that I know I am my father's son, and therefore entirely dependent upon his will. I know that I owe him my very life. I know that without his consent, fortified by his wisdom and experience, my passions are but mere infantile folly. I know <laughs> that he is the captain of my destiny. And without him, my boat is very small and rudderless, adrift on an ocean of turbulent waves that only his mighty hand can calm. I know this! 
Just so please, don't say it, sister. It won't work. Are you engaged yet? Oh, that's coming. Soon. Very soon. And don't you dare try to dissuade me. It won't work. Oh, my dear brother Cleant, why did I ever try to change your mind? Oh, from sheer innocence, Elise. Ignorant sweetheart to mine innocent. What would you know about the fiery steel of passion? The honeyed milk of intimacy? One day, the temple of desire will open its throbbing gates to you, as it has to me. Only oh, me. <laughs> Knew what? Okay. Who it was you loved, if only I knew. Oh, Elise, if only you did know. She's new to the district and has been locked up tending to her ailing mother, so you wouldn't have seen her. Oh, but if you could, Elise, she is the consummation of God's handiwork, the triumph of nature, the brightest star of the firmament. Oh, I'm gone, Elise. Over the waterfall without a paddle. So I can see, brother, but does she have a name? Oh, they're poor, Elise. They're clean, but very poor. Oh, sister, imagine the joys of reaching in and dragging them from the mire of paucity into the world of plenty, bestowing on them ever so delicately the commodious pleasures of this life. Silks, perfumes, combs, mirrors, and dainties. Little, tiny, pink dainty. Brother, with... her name. But here we are, stuck with this hideous, avaricious father whose greed cripples us. Scoundrel. He has robbed me of my life, my love, my pleasure. He is a basilisk unto my heart. I can see you are perturbed, but maybe... Just what good will it do us, Elise? to inherit every sou he has hoarded, every article he has locked up or hidden away, when we are too old to frolic in the fields of you. Just how do you think it feels to go around running up debts, putting off the tailor for one more month, running down alleyways to avoid my fellow card players? What do you think it feels like, huh? That's why I've come to you, to enlist your aid. I'm going to stand up to him and get what I really need for once. And if he doesn't grant me permission to marry, and money, lots of it, I'm running off with her anyway. Who? Name? And you're coming with us. <laughs> you, me, and Marianne. <laughs> It'll be risky. We'll take our chances, but it will be worth it to emancipate ourselves from the tyranny of the oppressor. Sick, semper, Tyrannus. If only Mother hadn't died. Ow, ow, ow! That's him. Let's go plot our strategy. Oh, but my heart will parasite. Oh, you cheat, you scathing, oh, you big man. The devil himself feasts on his soul. Ow! Yelping cur, a slathering mongrel. Ha! 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 Now! Out! Sir, I'm your son servant, not yours. I wait only on him. Then wait for him in the gutter where you both belong. I will have your prying eyes peering around every corner of this house, snooping up the closet and cupboard, snipping out the existing. But me, you snag, you ugly. Steal! From you, you who locks up everything you have and stands sentry by it with your dogs day and night. I'm in a sweat, lest this warthog root out my precious money. You, take my advice. Keep your trap shut about me having money hidden here. You have money hidden? I didn't say that. Oh, you didn't? No, you didn't tell that. Oh, I did. No, no, no. I, but I wouldn't put it past you to bandy it all over town. Gossip, rumor monger. Up, up, up! Very well, I'm going. What can I possibly steal from you? Well, I don't know until I look. Show me your hands. Well, here they are. Now the others. The others? The others! Here they are! Uh -huh. <laughs> what have you got in there? Take a look. Hmm. Did you ever kiss a rabbit on its nose? Oh, only a thief like you would wear breeches like those. The pleasure it would give me to rob this man blind. What's that? What? What's that about robbing? Rubbing? I was just saying that it would give you great pleasure to rub me blind to make sure that I couldn't steal anything from you. 
that is what I plan to do. Oh, the plague fallen all misers and cheapskates. What's that? What? What was that about misers and cheapskates? May the yellow fog of pestilence rain down on them. Who's them? Misers and cheapskates. Anyone in particular? Oh, just all misers and cheapskates. The jazz? Such as what? Such as who do you mean? Well, what do you think I mean? I think what I think. What do you think? About what? About who you were addressing. I was addressing myself. I was addressing myself to my cat. Would you prevent me from addressing myself to my cat? I will prevent you from addressing anyone in insolent, vengeful tones. Well, if the hat fits, wear it. Enough! Hold your tongue! Somehow. Oh! oh it, you missed the pocket. It, it, uh, out with it. Out with what? What you've stolen from me. I've stolen nothing from you! How? Nothing! Oh, get the hell out of my house! Keeping a large sum of money hidden in your house, but you, you see what it does. You see what it does. Every creep of the floor. <laughs> Every chirp of the bird. Every cry from the scullery. <sighs> I break out in cascades of sweat. But where else to keep it? A bank? <laughs> Suppose those starch collared crooks overextended their loans. Who would bail them out? The government? Ha <laughs> ha, dream on. Ha! <laughs> Be safe behind the mirror. First place any self-respecting burglar would look, I keep my viper in there. <laughs> oh, how smart I thought I was yesterday when I buried my newly earned 10,000 crowns in a strong box in the garden and then tied the Dobermans to the nearest tree. <laughs> but what if they dig it up? Give it to my children? <laughs> what if the earth erupts and belts us forth fire, smelting my coins into a sulfurous river that flows to the Seine? What if, good Lord, I've been over her. Calm up again. Ah, be calm. Ridiculous, what are you talking about? Father, huh? what are these stripes across your cheek? Oh, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Uh, have you been there long? We were just coming in. You heard. Heard what, father? I know it. I know you did. Know what? What you did, you did, you did. I know you did. You did what, Father? Uh, heard what I said just now. That's what you did. We did? I know you did. No, we didn't. Yes, you did. But, sir. Look, I was just saying how happy we would all be, <laughs> particularly me, if I had uh, 10,000 crowns here in the house <laughs> somewhere. Uh, not anywhere special, just... <laughs> Somewhere, if only. <laughs> but you see, I'm delighted to share this with you so that you don't imagine that I said I did have 10,000 crowns in the house, but I didn't say that, did I? Yeah, Father, at least oh, I'm sure. Only I did have 10,000 crowns. Oh. Yes, <laughs> well, an easy life would be then. Hmm? Your affairs are your affairs. Oh, now I need those 10,000 crowns. Father, the reason is. Then we wouldn't have to complain about how hard times are. Oh, what a mere 10,000 would do. Then just go get it. Everybody knows you can. Everybody knows you have enough. Enough? Do I look like I have enough? Do I act like I have enough? Nothing could be further from the truth, and anyone who propagates such a hideous lie should have hat pins stuck in their eyeballs. Oh, Father, your heart. Oh, that my children should become my mortal enemies. Betrayal of the highest, oh, and the pain. Saying you have money makes me your enemy. Yes, talk like that. Not to mention my children strutting around in the lace frippery is bound to lead someone to this very house to cut this very throat in the belief that I might, not that I do, but I might have money hidden here. Do you want to kill me? It'll be your fault between your lies and your extravagant tastes will be the death of me. What extravagant tastes? Oh, well, let's start with this attire you parade around in. Hmm? These things you call clothes. Why, what you've got on would cover my living expenses for a fine retirement. Lace, velvet, satin, gazelle hide, powders, colognes, good lord. You look like Marie Antoinette's boudoir. Oh God, you smell like your bidet. Where, where do you get the money for all this? Baccarat, my dear father. I gamble, I win, I buy clothes. 
Someone has to keep up appearances. Bad idea, son. Very bad. Save, invest, prepare for a rainy day. For as soon as God's wrath, there's going to be one. I'm again this coming in a student of fox like you with the ribbons of bows and their nasty little hankies. Well, I bet that the cost of that thing you call a haircut, if invested at 8.375, compounded quarterly, would within two years easily bring back 18 livres, six francs four, and 20 groats per hour. <laughs> no, that, that is, what are you doing? Planning to jump me? Steal my money? No, nope, Father, we were just trying to decide who could go first. Hmm? We both have something important to tell you. Oh, what a coincidence. I have something to tell you as well. It concerns marriage. Oh, yes, yes it does. How did you know that? What, tell me, my dear son, you, you are a, a fine gentleman. You have a certain je ne sais quoi with the fair sex. In your travels, have you run across a certain woman named Marianne? Yes, Father. And you? I have heard her spoken of. <laughs> ah, and what do you think of this girl, son? What do I think of her? Why do you repeat my words? Yes, what do you think of her? I think, I think she is a very charming woman. Oh, you think she's attractive? Oh, attractive, most certainly. And her manners? Oh, the savoir faire of a countess. Would she not be quite a catch? Oh, her husband would be the happiest of men. Ooh, some housewife, huh? The china <laughs> would sparkle and the cakes would be baked. Yeah, there's only one problem, Cleance. She's broke. Oh, don't let that stand in the way. Money is nothing in comparison with everything else she brings. <laughs> I beg to differ, but perhaps if you could cut back on your expenses just to oblige your father, there may be some way out of this. For her father, I'll cut to the bone. <laughs> Good boy. Seems we agree, so I have come to a decision. <clears throat> now, provided she can come up with some sort of dowry, I have decided, my son, to marry Marianne! <laughs> huh? Huh? That's it? <laughs> you have decided to marry Marianne! Yes. Who? You? 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 Yes, I, I, I. Excuse me, Father. I'd have to find a sink. Oh, God. Two spoonfuls of soda, son. Now you only need one. Sissy. <clears throat> now, as for you, Lily, what's wrong with your eyes? are spinning around like bicycle wheels. Nothing, Father. Where was I? Oh, yes. <laughs> I have decided to marry Marianne. For your brother, I have found a certain rich widow. <laughs> and you, Elise, I shall give to Senor Ansel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to Signor Ansel? Yes, old prudent wise man, barely fifty. <laughs> he made a fortune in oil, and you will inherit it soon. I thank you, dearest Ada, but I have no desire to get married, if you please. <laughs> well, I thank you, dearest Pitt, but I should rather you marry him, if you please. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon, dearest sir. Oh, well, I beg your pardon, dearest. <laughs> I am Signor Ansem's most humble servant, mm -hmm. and with your feelings fully in mind, I shall not marry him. Well, I am your most humble slave, but with your feelings fully in mind, you shall marry him tonight. Tonight? Tonight. That will not happen, Father. Oh, yeah, that will happen. No. no. Yes. No, 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 yes, no. Yes, 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 yes. I'll slit my wrists first. I think you won't. I think you will marry him tonight. Tonight? Ugh. All the fathers on earth couldn't force me to do this. Oh, God. Why do I have to listen to this? Hmm? Listen. Don't you know that you are my daughter? Now, no sensible person would object to this match, so why you? No sensible person would agree to such a mismatch, so why make me? Now here comes Valeria. He's a sensible young man. Let him be the judge. What a good idea. What he says goes, Dion. His word shall be law. I am clad. No backing out. Valeria, come here. Are you have been appointed judge and jury. Which one of us is right, myself or my daughter? Why you, sir, without question? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea why we disagree? Oh, no matter, sir. You are the essence of correctness. Well, I intend this very night to give her a husband. A man as rich as he is erect. 
and this piece of baggage won't take him. What do you say to that, Judge? I, I say, I say that I'm of your opinion, well, sir, because you cannot be wrong, never. And on the other hand, she's not altogether wrong. What? Signor Alzama is the most bountiful catch in the pond. Noble, steady, kind, very well off. He only exploits the best of our colonies, and he's no spring chicken. He won't last long. Could, could she do better? No, no, sir, that's true, that's true. Uh, but if she were to speak, which she won't, she might say that she was feeling a bit rushed, just a little bit, and perhaps you could give her a little time. <laughs> it's now or never, Cookie, got it? He's going to take her with no dowry. No dowry! Yes. Well, case closed. No argument with that, Miss Elise. What a brilliant stroke on your yes, part, sir. I do save a bundle. No question about that. Yeah. But still, your daughter may argue, were she to speak, that marriage is a once-in-a-lifetime proposition, and given the choice between eternal loneliness and eternal agony, no she dowry. must dowry! See? Absolutely. Well, that shuts your mouth right up. Oh, of course, there are those who would speak of parental love and affection and who would want to protect their daughters from the dreadful mismatch of age, temperament, and passions. No dowry. <laughs> no answering that. That is straight to the point and absolutely conclusive. Not that many fathers would sacrifice their daughters on the altar of mammon, but who would instead pray for their daughter's bliss? Peace and joy. No dowry! Well, that's that! Just no <laughs> argument against that! Oh my god, my school box! Nobody leave this room! What on earth are you doing, Bella? Well, I'm looking for a way in. If I go up against him directly, I'll offend him and the game is lost. I throw him a bone, I step back. I love a serve, I volley at net, I thrust, I parry, on guard, on point! This is my marriage we're talking about, Belair. I know, but frankly, I haven't a clue what to do. Well, the clock is ticking. We have to buy some time. Pretend that you're sick. And what happens when they call the doctor? Well, who cares? What do they know about it? Write them a check and they'll go away. And if all else fails, we'll run away to Morocco and live with the Berbers. At least I won't have to feed the dogs today. <laughs> oh, Elise, my belle, Elise. You must obey your father. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, especially where no dowry is concerned. A good daughter must accept what is given to her. I like this boy. <laughs> good words, son. Uh, here, see what the chef can do with that, hmm? yes, Sir, I hope you don't mind me being this intimate with your daughter. Oh, no, not at all. I'm delighted. In fact, I relinquish all my power over her to you. At least you are under his control. I'll oh, stay right on her back, sir. Yes, by all means. Uh, a tight leash, Yes, sir. Tight, tight and true. Uh, now, I'm going out for a stroll. Why don't you two be off? Hmm? Yes, yes, at least money is God's highest value. When a man hears no dowry, God is speaking to him. No selfish prattle from a daughter can get in the way of prophecy. Here, hold the bird. He speaks like an oracle. <laughs> Why couldn't I have had children like that? <laughs>
Oh, Man. how? Your father's in love? Imagine how I felt when he told me. Oh, your father in love? The pigs had wings. Oh, well, it seems this one does. We'll need money to fight this war. How goes our loan? Well, sir, you know the phrase, never a borrower or lender be? That was written by bankers and loan sharks so that you'd feel lucky to sign a note with them. Has it fallen through? Oh, not at all. Our broker, Donia Simon, has taken a particular interest in your petition. She says that your face alone will serve as collateral. So she can do the full 15000 We can only just a few small things tacked on. And, and you've been to meet with the actual lender. Oh, well, that's not how the game is played. Borrowing money has more mysteries than the Kabbalah. I couldn't get a hint of who the lender might be, but he wants to meet with you privately later on today at the home of a neutral party to learn more about your family and your estate. I mean, one mention of your father's name and the deal is done. If I can say it without choking. Now then, here's just a few of the things that the lender dictated to the broker for your approval. <clears throat> Provided that the borrower be of proper age, family, and estate, free from all encumbrances, blah, 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 a uh, bond shall be executed before a notary chosen by mutual consent. Yeah, no problems there. The lender, for the benefit of God's eyes and for his own good conscience, will only lend his money at five and a half percent. Five and a half? Well, no objection to that. But, but conditions being what they are, and the aforesaid lender being obliged to borrow it from someone else at the rate of 20 percent, it is deemed only fair that the aforesaid borrower in turn shall cover this obligation as well. Who is this thief? That's over 25%. Well, maybe we should wait for a better deal. How can I? I need the money desperately. My back is against the wall. That's what I told them. Man! No! What else is in there? Oh, not much. Of the requested 15000 the aforesaid lender can put down in cash only 12000 and therefore, the aforesaid borrower will have to take out the remainder in hard goods for which the following addendum is attached. Hard goods? Item. One large yellow and violet canopy bed lined with satin, hungry lace, and turkey feathers, very little eaten by moths, and wanting only one curtain. Item. Six stuffed chairs of the same, upholstery only, Slightly gnawed by squirrels. Three frames needing simple repair and joinery, otherwise none the worse for wear. This is incredible. Item, one complete set of well-mended iridescent tapestries depicting the great loves of the ages, including Mars and Venus, he with Thunderstock, and she is naked, <laughs> surrounded by raging boars. Adonis and Venus, he with mane of flame, and she is naked. Surrounded by clams and other mollusks. <laughs> Antony and Cleopatra with golden armor and spear. She is naked. Surrounded by venomous reptiles. And so on. Through Napoleon and Josephine. She is naked. <laughs> <laughs> there being 18 in number, all suitable for bedchamber and guaranteeing great gratification. Headache. Very bad headache. <laughs> Item. One accompanying set of costumes and props, complete with oversized mirror for home reenactment of the above scenes. All in average repair, excepting Caligula and Ivan the Terrible. One lizard skin stuffed with hay for hanging from the ceiling. Complete with hydraulic attachment for spraying jets of liquid. <laughs> from Fang. Oh, oh, well, that will be useful. Just a couple more. Um, one gold inlaid game board with a variety of delightful games, including Jump on the Puppy and Pussy Eat Mousy. Uh, the rest are extremely small. Let me see. Six pet rocks, case of mood rings, and a stuffed raccoon named Skippy? All of the above certainly worth well over 5,000 francs. Over 5,000? I'll never get a hundred for all this rubbish. Who does he think I am, his trash collector? You see? You see what the avarice of a father can drive a son to the flesh? 
And they wonder why we want them dead. <laughs> a father such as yours, sir, makes me more than wish him dead. For my part, I've always had an aversion to hanging, and I've seen more than one of my companions go a-swinging out of this world, but despite my allergic reaction to the smell of hemp, it would give me great pleasure to drop a loop over this man's neck and watch it snap like a chicken bone. Hmm. <laughs> or, I can't have that, I'd like to rob him of every centime he's got. What else is in here? Resources, and what properties are in this estate? Who's his family? Suppose he defaults. I can't give you any particulars, pal. It was only by chance he was recommended to me, but, uh, you know, his servant swears it's all good. His family's really rich. He's owed a legacy from his mother's death, and, uh, oh, it is guaranteed his father will be cold in the ground within eight months, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, this all sounds promising. Yeah. Let's go forward with the loan. Uh, faith, hope, and charity, the greatest of these is charity. At First Corinthians, sir. Uh, uh, you won't regret it, pal. <laughs> what the devil? That's not your sermon speaking to your father. Someone has spilled the beans. Who might that be? Huh? Man. Ow! Get out. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> you we'd be here. Hey, believe me, pal, I thought our meeting would be in confidence, but no harm done. We could come to an agreement right here, right now. Huh? Come on, no. right here, right now. This is the young man who wants to borrow the you 15 thou. extravagant huh? fool, dupe my own son. You, swine, usurer, my own father. You would destroy yourself by taking on such interest? You would enrich yourself by lending at such interest? Oh, I hope from this moment on, you'll be ashamed to show your face to me. I hope from this moment on, you'll be ashamed to show your face to God. After all the toil, sacrifice, and labor I went through for you, this is what I get, excess, deceit, Greed! You would soil the family name by cavorting with the lowest of loan sharks, turning the family home into a common hawk shop. Well, out of my sight, scoundrel! Disappear! Who is the scoundrel, father? The needy man who borrows what he must? Or the rich man who exploits the needy? Go! I said go! 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 <laughs> Comings and goings ever more closely. Hmm? What is it? What is it, girl? Huh? What? What? Wait! 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 Stay up here, right there. Sure, be right there. Yes, yes. Oh, right here. Right here. Uh, no. Uh, there. Yeah. Hmm? Right there. Right there. There you go. Self useful with any small talent God gave me. It's a tough world out there, the flesh. Only wit and cunning get you through. Mm, something for the master, then. I fix for him, he gives to me a little reward. Oh, he does? Oh, my flesh, my flesh. Men have been known to go without food and shelter for the commodities I trade in. There are certain services for which a man will pay dearly. Mm, I beg your pardon, but the word man here kind of implies that this person has some relation to the human race. That is a bad assumption. And the word pay is not really a word he knows. I mean, he will not pay you his respects. He will lend it to you with interest. Oh my God, the flesh, you underestimate me. 
I know all there is to know about a man, where to stroke them, how to arouse them, where their soft spots lie. There is no soft spot left to touch on this one, my love. He would rather tear out his vitals than give up a sou. And as for arousal, well, perhaps if this body of yours turned into gold, I mean, there might be some small reaction, but failing that, hey, uh, hey. Oh, here he Look, comes, no, no, no. there I go. Everything's safe. <laughs> ah, Frozine, how's our little business going? My, 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 aren't you the picture of health? Me? I've never seen you with such a, a glowing complexion. Oh, really? <laughs> so fresh and so pert. I've seen 25-year-olds who look older than you. Oh, yeah. Nonetheless, Frozine, I am over 60. 60, <laughs> the prime of manhood. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trading back about 20 years. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. I have none of that. You have the stuff to live to be 100. Well, you think so? Well, you show all the signs. You look at the light. Yes, right there, between the eyes. You have the mark of long life. Uh, you, so you know about these things. Oh, of course. Here, give me your hand. Yeah. Oh, oh, God! Mon Dieu! Oh, no, what? What a life life! Oh, God! Forget a hundred. Yes. I easily see 120, 130. That's twice my age now. You shall live to bury your children's children. Well, that'll be a relief. <laughs> now, Rosine, about all little business. Uh, need you ask? There are many things I can do to serve it. Matchmaking is what uh -huh. I do best. In our case, I have spoken intimately about you to both our ladies. I told the poor sick mama you fell head over heels over Mary Ann the minute you peeked through her window. <laughs> yes, and mama said. Oh, she was ecstatic. Oh, yes. And then she had a coughing fit. Oh. But then I told her you wanted to have Mary Ann tonight at the signing of your own daughter's marriage warrant. She agreed without hesitation and put Mary Ann in my care. Yes, I, I'm obliged to throw a supper tonight from Mr. Ensemble. What a perfect time for Mary Ann to meet the family and me. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, I'll send my limo to pick her up. I do. I, 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 but, Francine, uh, you did remind the mother that this is a marriage and therefore a dowry is expected. After all, no one, no matter how much in love, is going to marry a young woman who doesn't bring a little something to the bargain. A little something? This girl guarantees you 12,000 francs per annum. 12,000? Per annum. First of all, she's a slip of a girl. Used to yes. a diet of apples, bread crust, and wheat tea. Mm -hmm. uh, no potato for bras, no crepe on bang, no Aramac for one like most married ladies. Mm -hmm. Saving this alone will save you 3,000 francs. And then there's her taste for the simple life. No gowns, no pearls, no Louis Couture furnishings. No, 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 no. Only the barest necessities are enough to please our Marianne. Saving you a minimum of 4,000 francs per annum. Last but not least, there's her moral repulsion for gambling, which, as you know, is a frequent fixation for married ladies these days. Why well, I know of one wife who drops over 20,000 francs per annum at the roulette table. But let's just take a quarter of that. Let's say 5,000 at the gambling table, 4,000 for clothes, jewels, and furnishings. That makes nine. Add to that the three for food totals 12,000 francs for you per annum. But it adds up to nothing tangible. Pardon moi! Nothing tangible for sparse diet, simple taste, and a fervent rejection of gambling? Well, tangible, my dear lady, something I can hold on to. I can't bank a dowry made up of expenses that she won't spend. You'll hold on to plenty. They've spoken to me of foreign lands where they own counties of property. It'll be yours. All yours. Well, we'll see about that. But, but, but Frozine, there is one other thing. While she's no child, she is young, and that young generally fall in love only with their own kind. If I, to be frank, I worry about my age, the man my age might not attract her. Now, this could lead to, mm, how to put it, uh, marital discord. <laughs> Fool for older men. Marianne. Oh, Marianne, you should hear her on this subject. Uh, this, the, 
the spite she has for young boys, uh -huh. and how she waxes poetic over older men. Their beards, their folds of gristle, that hair in their nostrils. There's nothing <laughs> part of an older man that's not excited, and the older the better. Mm -hmm. So I warn you, when you meet her, look older than you are. Anything <laughs> under 16, and you have. But just three months ago, she broke off an engagement when her paramour boasted he was 56 and did not put on his spectacles to read the marriage warrant. Just for that. Just for that. You should see what the sight of a bespeckled nose does to her. Yes. You know, if I had been a woman, I don't think I would have liked young men either. Uh, of course not. What a bunch of fops yes. afraid of dandies. They're the intangible ones. Uh, Absolutely nothing you can hold in your hand. What kind of woman sees something and laughs? Not a real woman. Could you imagine loving such a preening popinjay? Yeah, I say that every day. I hate their nasty chicken squeaky voices, their scraggly little uh, chin hairs, a perfume uh, that smells like swamp gas, and their bare little bosoms popping out of their unbuttoned shirts. That compared to this. <laughs> this. This is how a real man wants to See? See, I, I, I better sit down. I don't, I don't think I can take much more of this. <laughs> Do I arouse you? <laughs> oh, arouse isn't the word. I don't think I can say the word in my company. Turn around. Turn around slowly. I wish I could paint you, sculpt you in marble, capture the essence of masculine power. Keep turning. Oh, oh, I feel faint. Yeah, well, I am pretty healthy. <coughs> Just a little mucus now and then. Oh, and you bear it so well. Watch you from behind. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, my. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, tell me, has, has uh, Marianne seen me peering through her window yet? Not yet, but I've talked a lot about you. Oh, the hips. The hips. <laughs> I've sung your praises to the sky and told her how lucky she would be to have such a husband. Little does she know. <laughs> oh, brother, see, you've done well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just let me make a slight request. Uh, see, I'm in a little bit of a legal jam. Yeah, not much yes, time, but I'm afraid I might lose the case because my funds are tied up. Mm -hmm. I wondered if... Mm -hmm. And then Marianne's eyes sparkled like diamonds when I mentioned your name. And you should have heard the little involuntary cooing sounds from her coat. Coo, 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 like pigeons. Actually, the dead case is a lot more serious than it's going on. And if I lose, I'm really devastated, really. So I'm uh, just a little... And then Marianne's ruby lips erupted in human cries. And animal shrieks of ecstasy as she called out your name. Harp, harp, harp. Harp for gone. In short, sir, I made her extremely anxious to get this marriage concluded. <laughs> oh, Frozen, you've done well. Thank you. I'm so obliged to you. Just a little bit to help me through the hard well, times. You know, I have to plan that supper, so bye-bye, huh? But I can't tell you how urgent this is. Oh, well, then, may, could you go pick up Marianne and bring her back here? Then then you and she and my stupid little daughter can go to the carnival <laughs> till after dinner. Bye-bye, now. And uh, don't go out through the garden when you leave. Oh, my God. But, have mercy on me. If you don't help me, I'll die. No, I, Save I, me. Oh, Save oh, me. Oh. oh. <laughs> I better go close those windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ta ta, Frozine. <laughs> Rot in hell, you withered prune with your dried up little acorns. <laughs> Damn, no one's ever run out on me like this. I'm on the floor. Oh, for God's sake, woman, get up. Get up. This is far from over, Monsieur Harpagon. I have not yet begun to fight. <laughs> Everything. Everything.
hard or you will break it. Now during supper, you'll be in charge of bottles and glasses, but I warn you, if one thing comes up missing, you'll pay for it 10 times over. <clears throat> A smart move. After you clean the glasses carefully, you'll be in charge of serving drinks, but only to those that are truly in need. And this is not some Champs Elysees restaurant. No fawning over them, no forcing them to drink, no standing around with a stupid grin on your face and a towel over your sleeve. Start with water, and only after they ask several times should you pour. Oh, this will be a merry little fest. And now, for you, Elise, my pudgy, <laughs> see that not a morsel of food, not a giblet is thrown out. We'll save what's left for the dogs when we decide to feed them. Uh, meanwhile, don't look for my fiance. You can certainly look better than this. <laughs> and now for you, poodle eyes. I have been good enough to forgive your recent transgressions, so no gloomy face in front of my bride-to-be. I, father? How could you- Look, everyone knows how children feel when their father remarries, especially to a beautiful young thing, so keep your hands to yourself and a smile on your face, fop. Disinheritance is only a pen stroke away. I can't promise I'll be happy to call her mm. stepmother. But I will obey your orders and welcome her to the home. Yeah, well, just remember, you're on very thin ice. Well, I need your help with this. Uh, Master Jacques, approach. Uh, excuse me, sir. Who do you wish to speak to, your chef or chauffeur? Both. Uh, which one first? The chef. <gasps> one moment to <laughs> sit <sing> down. <laughs> Master Jack, to a grand supper this evening. A grand supper? Marvelous. Yes, and I, I'm counting on you to come up with something special. Oh, no problem, yeah. sir. As long as I have uh, plenty of money. Money, always money. Don't you think about anything else? Hmm? Money, 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 morning, noon, and night. Hasn't your mouth got something better to do than say the word money all the time? Where is your imagination? Any fool can put on a grand meal with plenty of money, but a true chef puts on a feast with next to nothing. A uh, grand meal? Hmm? With uh, no money? Well, yes. Oh, well, perhaps you would like to show us how it's done by taking my place as cook? Uh, sticking your nose into everyone's business. Why don't you go stir your ladle, lackey? Oh, All right, stop, Sal. What provisions will you need? Why don't you go ask Monsieur Coudon Bleu over there since he knows so much about making something for nothing? <sighs> Now! How many people have they come back? Eight or ten. But assume eight. If there's ten, there'll be plenty enough food for everyone. Excellent. Yes. And we start with escargot. Mm. Then try <gasps> Truffle! <gasps> Snout! Oh, squab! <laughs> Sweet <laughs> meats! And a Don Perignon 27 as they pellet wash up. Then the bouillon course. Right, hold on, we're not trying to with cat balls. Ah, the chuck puree with aorta body and heart. Right, hold it. Oh, the meat. Just so hot. Oh, I'm right, gross. Stop! You're going to eat me out of house and home. Side dishes. Do you think we're inviting people over to bloat them to death? No doctor in their right mind would let anyone eat all this. Of the seven deadly sins, Sir Gluttony is surely to be the most life-threatening. Oh, this is a very smart man, Master Jacques. You pay attention. Wretched excess, uh -huh. Mr. Jacques. This is wretched excess. We are not, after all, swine at this trough. This is a refined dinner we're preparing, a, a light repast, a concerto of the taste buds, mm. not an assault on the esophagus. As the wise man said, we must eat to live, not live to eat. Listen. That. Come here, I want to hug you for that. Well, this is the finest sentence I have ever heard. We must eat to... No, wait. What, what was it again? Uh, we must eat to live, not live to eat. That's it, that's it. Do you hear that, Mr. John? We must... Who was it said this? I don't remember ah, just now. <laughs> well, write those words down for me, will you? I want them engraved in gold on the dining room mantel. I'll see to it, sir. Meanwhile, as for supper, leave it to me. I'll take care of everything. You're in charge, son. Oh, my pleasure, sir. Now, we'll need nice, cheap, fatty things so people will fill up and won't ask for more. Ah, uh, how about head cheese and beans? Mm, oh, sounds perfect, sir. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, Master Jacques, prepare the limo. Ah, uh, one moment. Mm -hmm. That. It's for your chauffeur. <laughs> go, 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 go. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Greece, die, and get burning up the quarter of my life. Go to Gre
limo and check the tires, then prepare to pick up my fiance. You're taking her, Rosine, and my stupid little daughter to the carnival until supper time. What? No, sir. No, she's not up for it. Oh, she hasn't even been in for a 2,000 mall checkup in ages. Well, we can get some use out of her. She just sits in the garage all the time. No, sir. You've been neglecting us, sir. Oh, I really do love that limousine. I'm very fond of her. Well, I even spent me own money to get her a fresh can of oil. I even opened me own wallet to get her spark plugs. Huh. Oh, the engine knocks, the transmission needs well, to look, She can manage a, a short trip, surely. Oh, no, no, she's not up for it. She can barely make it on her own every morning with three passengers. Oh, I'd hate to be the one to drive her those last few miles, and, and she sputters down, and then off to the junkyard. I'll handle it, sir. Our neighbors will be happy to drive the women to the carnival. No, it's almost not me the one that has to do it. Oh, look who's suddenly getting a conscience. Who's suddenly getting a conscience? Oh, enough. Sir, I hate flatterers, and this Paisan is one of the first order. He, he, he wants to control everything. He, he wants to look after the salt and the wine, the, the milk, the cheese, and he does it all for one reason, to flatter you. It makes people talk, and that just gets me so upset because... Well, after the limousine, love you most of all. <laughs> yes, uh, tell me, Master Jacques, uh, these people who talk, uh, what exactly is it that they say? Hmm? Oh, I, I, no, 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 sorry, I, I, I couldn't tell you that. No, please. Uh, no, it, it would just get you mad, and, and, and that would just make me upset. Oh, no, not at all. Far from it, you know. I, like any other man, would love to hear what the world says about him, huh? You'd be doing me a favor. Well, since you insist, yes. you are the butt of a thousand jokes about how mean you are. Well, for example, they say that you keep an almanac with all the fast days of all the religions of the world, so on holy days you don't have to feed us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's silly. They say that during the month of December, mm -hmm. you pick fights with footmen, doormen, and servants, so you don't have to give us a Christmas bonus. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, they say that you try to sue the neighbor's cat for lapping up cream in our kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> they say that you save your mouthwash yeah. to use it again. <laughs> Codger and lick petty, anal retentive, tight wad. <laughs> uh, use her vertical, <laughs> covetous. <laughs> Things like that. Blair, mm -hmm. beat the crap out of him. So lackey. We see where your truth telling gets you. Oh, stick to your own <laughs> business, milk toast. This is no affair of yours. Oh, now he's threatening me. Yeah, I'm right where I want him to pick the moves. He's all mine. That's right. Laugh it up, Sonny. Pretty soon you can be laughing through puffy lips. Yo! Give you the whip, you say? Yeah. My pleasure. Oh, oh, ow! Oh, ow! Hey, wait, wait. Are you aware, scullery rat, of the power I have over you? And that you're nothing but a pot scrubber, a grease monkey, and that you have no clue who you're speaking to when you call me lackey. I'm just joking, just joking. Not funny. No jokes aren't funny. Now that's funny. Things are going, I'd say 
Betty is. Why don't you run along and get it? This is going to be horrible. Why? What's there to worry about? What would you worry about if your neck was directly under the guillotine? I know. Marrying mm -hmm. Harpagon seems like a terrible death sentence. And if I guess correctly, your heart is still fixed on that handsome young man who came calling. Why deny it? Oh, he was gentle, kind, a bit overdressed, but nice. Did you find out who he is? We didn't get that far. I remember the vein just below his earlobe. I wanted to lick it. <laughs> Marianne, you need to get out more. There's more to life than a whiff of musk and a good line of talk. Those charmers are all over Paris, moosing their hair, rouging their cheeks, <laughs> frank to their name. What you need is a mature husband, one who will lay a good contract on you. Sure, you'll have your depressions and maybe a little hospitalization, but soon you'll be dead. You'll be rich and will make up for everything. Oh, what a dreadful idea! Waiting for someone to die so that I can be happy? Think about your mother. Death doesn't always fit in with our plans. I've learned that lesson. That can be arranged. Now, marry Harpagon on the strictest condition that he makes you a widow post haste. Uh, Make it six months. No, three. Anything less. Make it in the contract. Anything less can be less than fair. Here you come. A big smile. Oh, God, Percy, look at that face. Uh, don't be offended, mon petit bonbon, that I come to greet you with my spectacles on. Now, I know your earthly charms are radiant enough to dazzle even the naked eye, but it is through lenses that we observe the stars, you know, and you, yourself, are the brightest firmament in the sky. Nay, a galaxy that delights for the soul and for this delicate but oh so passionate frame. Why is she saying something? She's overcome, monsieur. You know how bashful young girls can oh, be. Yes, yes, perhaps all right. It was, well, uh, yeah, perhaps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, what? Here, this will cheer you up. Here comes my daughter. with. Uh, she has flowers from our garden. <laughs> it's the best I can do. Uh -huh. Please forgive me for not paying my respects earlier. Oh, contraire, it is I who should have come to see you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh. oh. <laughs> yes, well, uh, <laughs> see what a tubby one she's becoming, Marianne. <laughs> but you weeds grow fast. Mm. Ooh, tender tips. <laughs> <laughs> what a hideous man! <laughs> and what the devil? Uh, she says you leave her speechless. Oh, no, 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 no. My worst nightmares. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've got to get out of here. <laughs> and here comes my son to welcome you to our house. Proceed, oh, it's him. Who? Earlobe. Earlobe. This is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, my dear, I, I see you're surprised by my grown-up children, but don't worry, they'll be out of our hair in no time. <laughs> Madame, permit me to say how taken aback I am by these unforeseen circumstances. It was only today that my father told me of his intentions. Oh, I am as surprised as you, monsieur. I was not prepared for this meeting. My father has chosen well, Madame. <laughs> Indeed, he could not do better, and I am delighted to meet you. But my excitement does not extend to the design you may have of becoming my stepmother, the last title I would wish upon you. Harsh as it may sound to some, I hope that you will take my meaning in the proper spirit. The thought of these nuptials sadly repels me, conflicting as they do with my own interests. In brief, were left to me with the gracious permission of my father, this marriage would not take place. What kind of an idiotic greeting is that? <laughs> and sir, in reply, I vow unto you that things are equal on my side. If you are offended by seeing me as your stepmother, I am no less offended at the thought of you as my stepson. Please don't think that it is I who seek to cause you pain and misery, unless I were compelled to it by higher powers than myself. <laughs> I swear to you that I would not consent to a marriage that could cause you even the slightest unhappiness. Oh, well put to an idiotic greeting, an appropriate response. Oh, please, 
right there, please forgive his little youthful indiscretion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't be upset. He's a babbling twit who knows not what he says. Well, I'm not the least upset. <laughs> Indeed, I find his candor quite refreshing. <laughs> Anything less than total frankness, and I would only think the less oh, of him. You're far too generous, but perhaps time will age him, <laughs> and he'll see the folly of his ways. No, Father. As a matter of fact, I won't change my mind on this point. I beg the lady to believe me. <laughs> You're piling it on, son. Just drop it. And it go against the wishes of my heart? Change the subject, Cleon. <coughs> it's over. <laughs> right. Since my father wishes for me to speak in a different way, allow me, madame, to put myself in his shoes and confess I have seen nothing in this world so beautiful as you. I can imagine no higher purpose in the eyes of God than pleasing you. And to become your husband is a fate I would prefer to ruling the greatest kingdoms on this globe. There is nothing I would shirk from to gain so covetous a conquest. I would annihilate any opponent, vanquish Look, any I enemy. I know you're going a little overboard, but just slow it down. But, Father, these compliments I pay the young madame are from you. What, you think I can't do it myself? Out of my way. Go, <laughs> Why don't the young ones and I go to the carnival now? That way we'll be back sooner with more time to carry on this merry banter. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Valer, uh, check on the limo, would you please? Oh, I almost forgot. Dainty duck. Would you like some refreshments before you leave? Well, there are chairs all around it. See if you can rummage up something to eat. I've already taken care of it, Father. Huh? I've ordered Mandarin oranges, Tahitian kiwi, and Tasmanian kumquat. It's all on your tap. Valère! Oh, he's lost his marbles, sir! Are you worried that won't be enough? Well, perhaps the young madame will forgive any deficiency on my part. Oh, you needn't bother. Now, that's enough out of you. Oh, hey. Madame, have you seen a gem that sparkles like the one on my father's finger? Oh, it certainly does shine. Look at it up. Ah, how close. Oh, it sends beams around the room. <laughs> beautiful. No, no, madame. It is in your hands that it becomes beautiful. My father gives it to you. He does? An expression of his love. What are you doing? What kind of a question is that? He asks you to put it on. Okay. No, 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 he wants you to take it. <laughs> no, no, you must take it. You only offend him. I beg you. There's nothing I can do. I feed it long to the dogs. You're offending him. I spit in his mother's milk. You see how angry he's getting because you won't take it. You're killing me! I'm sorry, Father. There's nothing I can do. I'm doing everything I can to make her keep it. <laughs> I am going to die and come back and plague you! Mademoiselle, he's threatening me. You see what you're doing? God, you will have my blood on your hands! I'm very worried about him, Mademoiselle. Please, take the ring. Well, oh, for God's sake, take it, peace at any cost. <laughs> I'll kill you for now, okay. if you want me to, sir, but I'll give it back at some more convenient moment. Okay. No! <laughs> <laughs> sir, there's a man at the door who wants to see you. Well, tell him I'm busy. Yeah, but he says he has money for you. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. but I, I'll be right back. Hmm? <laughs> that... No! I'm uh, slain! Uh, oh my god, sir! Uh, Are you alright? I just must have put him up to police murder! Sorry, sir. I just thought you'd want to hear the news. What news? All four tires on the limousine are flat. Oh, well, call the automobile club. The flesh don't uh, that man at the door. Get away. In the meanwhile, <laughs> Father, I'll entertain our guests out in the garden. What? Valera? What? That's the prince. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, they're in the garden. Oh, Kalihan, I curse the day you were born. But we're not done yet, son of mine. And when I'm through with you, we'll see who destroys who.
come in from the rain. My brothers told me everything. I know his love for you is real. I also know the agony of forbidden love. Trust me, I know. And I'll do anything I can to help. Oh, I'm so grateful to have made a friend like you. I know I'm going to need one. Why the hell didn't you tell me? Had I known, I wouldn't have pushed so hard with Mr. Personality. That's all my fault. My stars shine darkly on us, and I have doomed us to this fate. Oh, Marianne, what can we do? Well, I'm at the will of my mother. It's her dying wish that I marry a wealthy, older man, and oh, thanks to you, Rosie, that wish has been realized, contract and all. What else can we do but hope for the best? <laughs> that will go a long way. Oh. Is there nothing more you can offer me? Some pity, a little solace, your lap to rest my head in. Oh, I have nothing but pity. But how can I go against the wishes of my mother who sacrificed everything for me? Oh, you talk to her. See if you can change her mind. She hates me. I've known it from the first time she saw me. Oh, she did find you repulsive. <laughs> Rosina, the only chance we've got, you'll think of something I know you can. Yes, you Rosie? Yes, you got them into this. Easier said than done, children. <sighs> Turning your mother around isn't out of the question. She's a decent woman. Plus, she's old and not tightly wrapped. Yeah. Her we can get over. <laughs> the real problem, as I read the cards, is your father. Always has been. Break the contract and he'll howl out like a banshee. It's out of the question. He lets you trot home with this trophy he so desperately sought. No use getting the mama to reject him. We have to think of some way for him to reject Mary Ann. Well, now there's a thought. Give me a moment here. Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Something's coming. Someone, someone his own age, someone with slag, heaps of money, and a title or two to boot. Let's say the uh, Baroness of Lower Bougainvillea for now. <coughs> and let's say your father just happens to find out that she's head over heels for him and is willing to put a hundred thousand crowns on the table plus a couple of chateaus and a railroad or two just for the right to marry him. What happens then? Oh, he dumps Marianne and marries her! <laughs> But there is no baroness like that. This will never work. You leave the baroness to me, and you, Cleon, think of some way to pay me for this. You have my assurances. And Marianne, turn those bountiful charms that have so slain my heart on to your mother. She must release you from your side of the contract. Beg, cajole, bring up childhood memories, sing sad songs, quack like a duck. Whatever it takes, just convince her. And then, we are each other's to caress, till death, mwah, do, mwah, us, mwah, part, mwah. <laughs> well, well, mwah. what mwah. mysteries have we mwah. here? Mm. The stepson kissing the stepmother, who seems to not mind in the slightest. Bonjour, papa! <laughs> The little is ready. Go to the carnival. Have a good time. Not you, Cleon. Let's just pretend she wasn't your stepmother. What do you think of her? 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 Oh, Marianne, what do I think of her? Say her looks, her intelligence, her fingers. Eh, comme ci, comme ça. That's it. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Father, she's not at all what I expected. Mm. She's a flirt, nothing more, and not even a very pretty flirt. Not all that bright either, mm. but please, Father, do as you will. She's as good as any other stepmother, I suppose. Hmm. But uh, just a moment ago, I thought I heard uh, you. Some sappy words, greeting card platitudes, just for your sake, Father. So she arouses no interest on your part whatsoever? <laughs> interest? <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. You see, as I was standing there, I began to reflect on my age and the obvious difference between me and Marianne, and I began to realize that it could cause quite a stir, she and I. 
people would talk. So I began to think that I might give up on this silly little notion and turn it over to you. Had you not developed a dislike for her. <laughs> to me, you would have turned yes, her over. Yes, to you. In marriage. In marriage. Well, she, she's not exactly my idea of a good time, but to please you, Father. Oh, no, 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 I would never force anything on you. Oh. But see, for your sake, I would make any efforts. <laughs> the sun. <coughs> a, a, a loveless marriage? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to you. P perhaps we would grow on one another, they say. Love is often the fruit that wedlock bears. Yeah, bad poets and women say that, son. The truth is harsher. <laughs> Infidelity, alcoholisms, fatal accidents. Hmm. These are the realities. You wouldn't want that, would you? Now, had you had any inclinations towards her, that would be different. I'd be proud to lead you to the altar, but that not being the case, I'll go back to my original plan and marry Marianne myself. Father, I'll come clean. Mm -hmm. I love her. I love her very much. And have since the first time I saw her. I have been planning to propose marriage and looking for a right time to ask your permission. Huh. Have you been to her house? Yes, Father. Mm -hmm. Frequently? Enough, given how short a time we have known one another. And you were welcome? Very much so, though without telling her who I really was. That's why she panicked when she saw me here. And you told her you love her and you want to marry her? Yes. I've even discussed it with her mother. And the mother was receptive? She listened very, very carefully and kindly. And the daughter returned your affections. If I don't flatter myself, father, yes, I do believe she has some affection for me. So, now we know. <clears throat> you know what you must do, son. Forget about her. She's mine, not yours, mine. You shall marry the rich widow I spoke of earlier, and that is that, in your mind, Marianne no longer exists. Repeat after me, Marianne no longer exists. So that's your game, is it? I bear my soul to you. So you catch me in your trap. Well, it won't work. I'll stop at nothing to get Marianne, and I'll stop at nothing to make sure you can't get near her. You may have a contract with her mother's signature, but I have other weapons. Oh, oh. Oh, and believe me, I'll use them. Oh, poacher! Stay out of my hunting ground. I got there first. I am your father, young man. You owe me. When it comes to love, I owe you nothing. I'll beat your brains to vicious swamp. Don't flatter yourself, old man. Be bad for me. Marianne no longer exists. My father no longer exists. <gasps> no, 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 I wish to marry, and a lover boy here has moved in on her. Oh, 
He is wrong to do that. He, he owes me the respect to bugger off and leave it to me. You are dead right. Dead Wait right. here, I'll go talk to him. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? I have fallen madly in love with a charming young woman my own age. My father catches wind of it and proposes to her himself. Oh, he is wrong to do that. At his age, he should be ashamed and leave love to the young. He's had his chances. You are dead right. Wait here, I'll go talk to him. A very reasonable young man, your son. He sends his respects and, and begs you to understand that he was only overtaken by a fit of passion and that he will gladly step aside, provided you treat him better and allow him to take a wife that he finds attractive. <laughs> Well, since he looks at it that way, Master Jack, tell him then he can look forward to parental love and affection from me. He can marry anyone he wants, with the exception of Marianne. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. The savage beast is soothed. Oh, oh. Uh, he says it was only uh, your rage that threw him into a fit, and that he wants to give you everything, anything at all, provided you show him the respect that the son owes the father. Master Jacques, assure my father, I will obey his every wish as long as he grants me Marianne. Well done, he's agreed to everything. Bless him. <laughs> done, he sends his blessings. Oh, praise God. Well, gentlemen, I declare this contretemps over. May peace reign forever and ever. Oh, Master Jacques, you are a man among men. <laughs> Don't mention it, sir. <laughs> Master Jack, I am eternally indebted to you. This deserves a reward. Run along, I'll remember when the time comes. <laughs> Father, I beg your forgiveness. I got a little bit out of control back there. It happens. It's been a problem for me. Now forget about it, son. I bathe in the river of regret. I wash away my sins. I can see that, son. It makes me glad. You are so good oh, yeah. to forgive me so quickly. Yeah, it is easy to forgive one's children, especially when they remember their duty to their parents. And you don't harbor any resentment at all for my behavior? It was a little much. On whatsoever, I can see that you've repented and begun anew, huh? I shall carry the light of your charity to my grave. It shall illuminate my darkness. Yes, and, and as for me, I shall delight in beneficence, son. You name it, you got it. Oh, Father, really? What more could I ask for now that you've granted me Marianne? What? I was just saying, Father, now that you've granted me Marianne, what more could I ever ask for? said anything about granting you Marianne. You did. I did. Absolutely. No, no, no. What happened was you said you'll forget about her. Me? Forget about her? Yes. Not a chance. Not a chance to forget about her? I'm more determined to marry her than ever. I, 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 traitor? Double dealer? Nothing it will stand in my way. Ah, oh, you are forbidden from my sight. Fine. I, I abandon you. Great. I disown you. Terrific. I disinherit <laughs> you. Oh! I spit my curses on your coffin. Thank you, sir. That's very generous of you. <laughs> oh, 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 our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy get kingdom, out, the... Yes, sir. Take this. My clothes. Well, get them off. Who are you? And what is in here? Ugh. It's your father's treasure. Ten thousand crowns, all gold. I figured out where it was, and I just had to wait for the right time. Oh, flesh! You look ridiculous. Well, how would you get around those mutts? Oh, well, we gotta no. get out of here! Come on. What? No! Oh, 
house. Okay, what's going on? No, my money, my dears, darling money. Oh God, my beloved, where have you gone? They've taken you from me. I have lost everything. My foundation, my joy, my consolation. I can't live without you, without you. Life has no purpose, oh God. Without you, I am nothing, 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 nothing. And now, oh God, I am dying. Cross-examine the entire household. Male servants, female servants, the flesh, the son, daughters, dogs, myself. Oh my God, what a hideous group. And I suspect a whole lot of them. Every one of them is guilty, guilty, guilty. What the hell is that? What, are you talking back there? What, what's that whispering about? Huh? What's, what's the commotion? What, is it deep back there? Have you got the thief with you? For God's sake, if you know anything about the thief. Can I can't take it? Uh, I'll pay you handsomely, please. Please, please. What, my dollar? <laughs> oh, look, oh, how about this? It's a, a Dolex. <laughs> Don't want to frighten anyone. 
lose our advantage. Uh, how about we collect a little evidence first and then we spring it up? <laughs> Sorry, sir. Then what is your proof? Proof? Proof. Evidence. Uh, it's true. Because I believe it. <laughs> oh, you'll have to do better than that, lad. Wait, wait, wait. Have you seen him hanging around where I had my money hidden? Yes! Ah, yes, he was hanging around! Ah, uh, would you keep your money? In the garden. Yes! Oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. Would you keep your money? In that strong box. Yeah, he had a strong box right, in yes. the garden. Yeah, yeah. What kind of strong box? Hmm. What kind of strong box? Yeah, what kind? Of? It was a strong you know, box. <laughs> Perhaps a detail or two. Hmm? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, it was big. Uh, mine was small. Uh, with oh. what was in it? A small box, but lots inside. Uh, yeah. What color? Color. <laughs> you, you want to know the color? Yes. Let's see. Oh, what was the color? Uh, why don't you tell us? Hmm? Um, it was. Uh, no, gray. That's it, a slate red. So it was gray when the light hits it. So it was a gray strong box, uh, uh, not very big, but lots in it. Oh. That's mine. I, Chief, swear out the warrant. Oh my God. God, my God, from now on I trust no one, myself included. Uh, uh, this is him now. Um, you know, make sure not to tell him I'm the one who indicted him. Well, there. Down. Uh, Neil. Lord. <laughs> now, confess to the most heinous crime ever committed by mankind, ever. What are you talking ah! about? Ha <laughs> ha. No remorse. God. No contrition. The mind and soul of a Hardened criminal. What crime are you talking? What crime? As if you didn't know. <laughs> Go ahead, lie, cheat, prevaricate. You'll only swing in the wind longer. <laughs> so, ah! How could you take advantage of my feelings for you? The trust I placed in you. I loved you for that. Then you go and pull the dirtiest, cruelest trick ever perpetrated by man. My honor forbids me to lie, sir. I denied nothing. Rat tattooey. I'm a prophet. I was waiting for the right opportunity to tell you, sir. I, 
I, I, I failed you, I see that, but I beg of you a chance to explain my reasons. Reasons? Swindler. Fraud. All oh, names that I deserve, sir, and more. But perhaps when you hear the other side of the story, you'll find more affectionate terms. The, uh, the other side of the story? What other side of the story can there be that I won't murder me? Driven a white hot knife through the fragile tissue of my aged heart. Oh. That which your heart so dearly loves has not fallen into bad hands. I am of rank and status to care for providently. There is nothing here that cannot be fixed. Well, then fix it. You owe me, Toad. Give me back what is mine as pure and clean as when I left it. Well, your honor shall be satisfied, sir. Oh, Schmoner. Who put you up to this vicious assault? Need you ask? Yes, I need ask. What scoundrel drove you into this? A god on high who makes all men dumb as a post. Love. Oh. Love? Yes. Love for my money, gold digger. No, sir, your wealth had nothing to do with this. Ask for nothing more than I've already taken. What? No, you can't have it. It's mine. My mind. Can you believe this? He robs me of the thing that was to my heart, and now he wants to keep it. Well, we wouldn't call it robbery, sir. Oh, you wouldn't, huh? A treasure like that? Why else would I keep it locked and hidden from everyone else, hmm? I agree. It is a treasure well worth keeping under lock and key. But... You would not be losing it if you gave it to me, sir. Please, I beg you on my knees. Let me keep the treasure box whose lock I have picked. You will never regret it, sir. <laughs> what are you talking about? We have pledged our faith to each other, your treasure and I. Well, swore I'd never to part. That I'd like to see. We have vowed to be all things together forever. Yeah, yeah, don't count your chickens, little man. Until death do us part. And he's got gold fever. Huh? And whatever motives you may ascribe to me, I assure you, I have acted only on the purest of intentions. Oh, a Christian saint right here among us. <laughs> Where's the cat and nine tails? I, I am willing to suffer whatever consequences you may inflict, but I beg you to believe that I alone am to be blamed. Your daughter played no part in this. My daughter? Well, I would certainly hope not. Now, let's stop pussyfooting around here. Where have you taken the love of my life? Taken, sir. Nowhere. Your treasure's still here in the house. A little box. Still in the house. <laughs> you haven't damaged it, have you? Rummaged around in it? Rubbed it with your stubby little fingers? Sir, my love burns with a pure and holy flame. Burns for my strong box. I would sooner die than dishonor her. Dishonor my strong box? Oh, but I do admit, sir, I have enjoyed the sight of her. Oh, my eyes have gazed upon her golden lobes, her twinkling orbs, but... I could never be tempted to sully her innocent beauty. Golden lobes, twinkling orbs, this fellow's further gone than I thought. The scullery maid knows the truth, sir. She can testify. But the scullery maid is an accomplice to the crime. Write that down, Chief. She was witness, sir, to our passions and to our pledge of eternal fidelity. I'm really worried about him. And I assure you again, sir, that your daughter's chastity remains intact. My daughter's what? She made me vow with the written promise of marriage sworn before the scullery maid that we shall forestall the consummation of our marriage until the night of our nuptials. <laughs> You're going to have nuptials with my daughter? Yes, sir. Nuptials. <laughs> Lost me nuptials. My life is a train wreck. She throw the book at him. A hundred counts of theft and, and nuptially my daughter. Of me, then. 200. Well, these charges are unjust. Wait till you find out who I am. And... Oh, you wretched, ungrateful hussy of a poet. Conniving trawler. This is how you pay me back? Hmm? Taking up with a thief? Scudding about the scullery? Having nuptials without my consent? Oh, you too will pay. For you, a dark pit with vermin and slugs. And for you, the gallows at sunset! I will not be condemned by a raving madman. Uh, uh, I demand a fair trial. Well, first, we'll rip your sinews on the gallows. Oh, Father, please, I beg your mercy. Please, don't let parental passion okay. push you to an act you will regret. Take the time to consider. For, sir, as you have often said to me, all that glitters is not gold. So the reverse could be said as well. Take another look at Belair. He is not what you think him to be. And as soon as you see him for what he really is, as now only God does, you will know why I have given myself to him. 
It was fated that we should meet, that it be he who would save me from the surging undertow that threatened to engulf me that day at the shore. It is he to whom you owe the very existence of your loving daughter. I wish you both had drowned. No! Groping about under the stairway, stealing my money was the love and that. Chief, do your duty. Let justice be swift and harsh. <laughs> so the worm has turned, Belair. This is much more fun than that joke of carnival. My dear Harpagon. <laughs> oh, you're not looking so good. Are you all right? Your own son, I, uh, I'm afraid your marriage contract is in jeopardy. And, and as for me, you see a man before you besieged. My honor, my home, my very existence, all infiltrated by this thief of love who's insinuated himself into my household as a servant to pillage my property and prestigitate the purity of my progeny. <laughs> well, who cares about your money? The government got engagement, Strunson. A direct insult to you, and I urge you to press charges against this profligate for alienation of affection and loss of services. Revenge is the only course a man can take. Far be it from me to force a marriage on an unwilling partner and lay claim on optioned property. But where your interests are concerned, sir, you can rely on me to uphold them as if they were my own. Mm. And here you see before you an honest magistrate, ready and willing to uphold the law to the letter. Chief, do your duty for God and Republic. Ah, take them away and show no mercy. Whoa. What crime is it to love your daughter when you find out who I am? Oh, you who will. cares who you are? This town is full of impostors, masqueraders, posers. Say what you will. To me, you are nothing but a lackey. <gasps> That's my master. Be not so free with your words, sir. By birth and by privilege, I have right to this fair maid. Anyone in Naples can testify to my rank. Naples? Your dart has hit the wrong spot on the globe, young man. You are speaking in front of a man to whom all Naples is known and who can see right through your little tail. You might want to throw again. If you know Napoli, sir, then you must know Don Tomas d'Albruzzi. A few people know him better than I. Uh, Don Tomas, Don Giovanni, enough with the hours no, already. No, let him speak. His words alone may hang him. What of this d'Albruzzi? He was my father. Oh, Don Tomas d'Albruzzi was your father. Come, come, you could do better than that. Well, there is nothing better than that. He was the noblest of Neapolitan nobles. You, young man, are mistaken. Don Tomas d'Albruzzi, his wife and children were lost in a storm at sea 16 years ago, following the great purge which exiled the highest nobles of the town. <laughs> ah, but there's more, sir. His seven-year-old son was saved from the shipwreck, brought aboard a Spanish frigate, and raised as the captain's own son. And I am that boy, educated at Barcelona in the military arts. Recently, word reached me that my father, too, had survived the shipwreck. So I set across Europe in search of him, until in the course of my travels, fate brought me to the beach where I met Elise in the undertow. I rescued her, became a slave to her charms, and temporarily suspended my search so that I may make her my wife. An amusing tale, well concocted. Mm -hmm. But it lacks credibility, young man. Anyone could have made this up. For proof, I offer this agate bracelet that my mother, God rest her soul, wore as the ship capsized. Could I see that? Uh, yes, sir. Um. Oh. Brother? Sister? Brother? Sister? Oh. Brother? Sister? I don't have. 
have any money. Oh, so you're my brother! You don't look that much like me. Well, here we are in Paris, only I never go outside because my mother has rickets, but oh. I'm sure she'll be glad to see you anyway. She just can't dance very well. Oh, oh do you have any money? Children? Father? Father? Children? Father? 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 Children? Father? <laughs> whom heaven saved from the waves and swept to the shores of Africa, clinging to the dorsal fin of a dolphin. <laughs> it's a strange place, Africa. One doesn't get much sleep, humidity, bugs, general unrest. But a diligent man can do well. Natural resources, wildlife on the hoof, it all adds up. But the siren call of the city cried out, Restaurants, parks, women younger than I. <laughs> Naples was out. One purge in a lifetime is enough. And due to some little, well, business misunderstandings back on the dark continent, I decided to change my name as well. So here I am in Paris, Count Anselm. <laughs> <laughs> is this your son? Yes. Well, then I hold you accountable for the 10,000 crowns of which he robbed me. He robbed you. He robbed me. Ah. <laughs> and just who told you this? Master Jacques. I said that? Well, it's in the book, Jacques. She wrote it down. Uh, do you really believe I would do such a thing? Belief has nothing to do with it. I just want my money back. Have no fear, father. This can be arranged. Here's the bargain. I give you your money, you give me Marianne. You know where it is? It's in a nice, safe place. So which will it be? Your strong box or Marianne? Has anything been removed? Not to sue. I've already discussed it with her mother. She's agreed to allow Marianne to decide. She marries whomever she wants. Provided, of course, you release her from the contract. Except, Cleant, it's not that easy. There's also my father and my brother to contend with. God has not reunited me with my children so that I might contradict their wishes. <laughs> Marianne, you are free to choose. Me? I've never made a decision in my life. Monsieur Harpagon, you are well aware how this will end. Consent to this double betrothal as I do. <laughs> Before I consent, I have to see my strong box. In good time. Safe and sound. You know, there's not a sou in there for my children. Weddings or not. <laughs> I don't have any money for them. <laughs> well, I have money for them. <laughs> You'll pay for the wedding? Rehearsal, reception, and all. I'll need a new suit. Done. Huh? Jock, champagne. Uh, I'm paying. Huh? Let us rejoice in the happiness of the day. Yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Who is going to pay for my time here? Police work doesn't come cheap. Well, there's a payment. Take him and hang him. First, I'm beaten for being honest. Now to be hung for lying? What's a poor man to do? Now, now, Monsieur Harfagon, on a day like today, certainly we can find a way to forgive his little white lines. You'll pay off the chief, then? Happily. <gasps> but first let us dance and dance and dance, and then we'll surprise your mother and share our joy with her. Perhaps even she will dance. <laughs> hit it! What? No, hit it. No, 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 hit it. No, stop. OK, stop the music. Wait, wait, hold it. Back. No dancing. Not until I get my strong box. 